This is Flightless. It's the first game I ever made, and I did it using Python and Pygame. The platforming is pretty basic in it, the graphics look like a kindergartner drew them, there's plenty of bugs, and if you were to look at the code, I'm pretty sure it would give you a headache. It's objectively a very novice effort at making a game, but I had an absolute blast making it. After Flightless, I'd go on to work on a bunch of other Pygame projects. My workflow was usually to read and watch some tutorials online, then try my hand at working on a new game where I'd learn a little bit more after each attempt. I dabbled in different genres and got some insight into how some of my favorite games actually work behind the scenes. This was all a few years back, but let's fast forward to today. I find myself working a full-time job where I do use Python on the daily, but my job is not at all centered around coding video games. Game development has mostly just become a hobby that I pursue whenever I have time, and when I am developing games, my focus has largely shifted to Godot, leaving Pygame as a pretty rarely used tool in my arsenal. It's definitely been some time since I've booted up the Pygame module, but I still view my journey with Pygame as a very pivotal chapter in my growth, not just as a game developer, but also as a programmer and even a person in a broader sense. Now, to avoid any confusion, I'll make this disclaimer very clear. If you're interested in a serious career in game development or have goals of releasing a commercial game, then your time will probably be better spent learning a popular game engine. In a field as technical and competitive as the video game industry, I can't really think of a reason why you'd ever need to use something like Pygame over Unreal or Unity. But with that said, not everyone needs to be a career game developer. There's plenty of people who would benefit a lot from dabbling their toes in game development without having to make it their full-time job. Maybe you're a student who's looking to create some projects that you can showcase on your resume, or a working professional who's interested in learning some more technical skills to make yourself more competitive in the workforce or even switch careers entirely. Learning some Python would be really valuable here. It's an incredibly flexible and in-demand programming language. And this is where Pygame really shines in my opinion because it makes learning Python really fun. You see, for most of my life, programming had always seemed really intimidating to me. At the time, I wasn't aware of all the learning tools available on the internet, and nobody in my family worked as a computer programmer, nor was coding part of my K-12 education, so I just didn't really know where to start. It wasn't until my early college years that I happened to find myself taking a few coding classes as part of the program that I was in. And as the courses went on, I remember liking programming less and less. University courses love to teach a bunch of theory, which is important, but a lot of my projects felt very abstract, so it never really felt like I was working on something very tangible that I could play around with. I survived through the schoolwork, but very much saw coding as a means to an end and not something that I would ever do during my free time, let alone as a career. At some point, I found myself needing to learn a little bit of Python for a research project that I was working on, so I was looking around for resources to learn. Unfortunately, there weren't many Python courses at my school, and I found myself getting pretty bored with most of the basic learning resources online. My motivation for learning some Python had pretty much drained until I stumbled upon this quirky little library called Pygame. Growing up, I've always loved video games. I'd play them for hours as a kid and pretty much never got tired of them. I thought that when I grew up, I'd be making video games as a career, but due to the intimidating nature of programming, I'd never really pursued it. But now being in a position where I needed to learn a little bit of code, making some silly little games seemed like it would be a good way to motivate myself and learn some Python. It mostly just started as a dumb excuse to learn, but for the first time, I was actually able to apply programming to something that I was really passionate about. I'll never forget the excitement that I felt when the character I drew was all of a sudden brought to life on my code and through the click of a button it was moving around on the screen. What used to be pure magic as a kid was all of a sudden so tangible and real in a way that I'd never really felt working on any other projects. And all of a sudden I found myself excited to sit down on my computer every day and code in Python. I'd stay up all night trying to fix bugs, draw tiles, or figure out how basic collisions worked. Turns out that if you practice something, then over time, you will improve at it, and I went from being a pretty mediocre programmer who did it to just get by and pass a class, to someone who was actually pretty competent. I also finally began to realize how useful some of the stuff that I learned in school actually was. Something like object-oriented programming or design patterns, which previously felt like a bunch of stuff that would just overcomplicate your code, all of a sudden made a lot of sense to me in a game design setting. In my current job, coding is a very vital part of it, and although I'm not explicitly making games, I can tell you for sure there have been a lot of moments where a lot of the hard Python skills that I learned from playing around in Pygame have very much come in handy. Since games are this crazy merger of science and art, I also found myself dabbling in other fields such as music and making pixel art. And now nothing I worked on was particularly amazing, don't get me wrong, but it was fun, and it gave me the chance to diverge from technical tasks and embrace some of my creativity. Making music or drawing pixel art might not seem like they'd be very useful for a programmer, but just partaking in these activities significantly improved my ability to learn new skills, and this is pretty much the most sought-after trait in a programmer. 
somewhere along the way. I also thought it'd be a fun idea to document some of my Pygame endeavors on this YouTube channel. Pygame seems to have seen a bit of a surge in terms of content and tutorials these days, but at the time, Pygame tutorials felt a little bit less common. As someone who felt that they got a lot of value out of tutorials from other people, I hope to give back a little bit and share some of the insights that I found, as well as clarify some of the concepts that I struggled with on my journey. Now, like my games, these videos can also be pretty rough around the edges, but some of them actually managed to get a surprising amount of popularity, definitely more than I would have ever imagined. This might be a little bit embarrassing to admit, but whenever I'm feeling down, something that always loosens my spirit is looking at my old videos and seeing all the positive comments that people have left saying that my tutorials helped them or that I clarified something for them. I even had a few comments reference me as a Pygame tuber, which to me is pretty funny considering I haven't even opened Pygame in what is now maybe two or three years. Will I continue developing in Pygame or push out more tutorials? Well, never say never, but I'd say for now it's probably not very likely. There's definitely other content creators now that have pushed Pygame way farther than I probably ever could have, which is really awesome to see. So if you are looking to dive into Pygame, I have full confidence that there are plenty of resources out there for you to use. And I fully encourage you to dive right in. Because while Pygame might not be the fastest or most optimized way to make a game, what it did for me was take the daunting task of learning Python and programming and make it into something that I would look forward to every single day. And if it weren't for that, I don't think I'd have the amazing career that I have today or the awesome hobby of game development that allows me to express myself in a way that I never thought I could. To the developers and community who have contributed some of their time into Pygame, my sincerest thank you, and I really appreciate you.